All right, class, I know you guys have been missing me a bunch uh, with my recent absences, so I decided to go ahead and make you guys a video on Chapter 12, Section 1. Uh, the Chapter 11 test has been postponed until the day after I come back, so I'll, I'll, whenever I come back, hopefully tomorrow, um, we will review Chapter 11, and then the next day we'll test. Uh, this is Section 12.1. Uh, go ahead and write this down, and then I'll talk about it in a second. All right, so <coughs> our first term that we're going to be using uh, for this entire chapter is sequence. And a sequence is a function whose domain is uh, a consecutive set of integers, but typically that consecutive set of integers is just going to start with one and then move forward, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Uh, we typically don't care much about the domain, though. Uh, we're more interested in the range, which is actually going to make up the sequence. Um, in this example, the, if you thought about the domain, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, but like I said, uh, we're actually going to be concerned with the 2, 4, 6, and 8. Uh, this is a finite sequence, meaning it ends, it ends it with 8. Uh, this is an infinite sequence. Uh, we use the dot 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 to represent uh, infinite sequences, just meaning it goes on forever in this pattern. Writing the first six terms of the following sequences, or uh, this is going to be like one of the, your homework types of questions. Uh, notice these two things are very different notations. Here we have a sub n, meaning the nth term. Uh, here we have f as a function of n, um, but it's the same process. So uh, you're trying to find the first six terms. Uh, the first term, a sub 1, the first, that's what that means, the first term is 2 times 1. You're basically plugging in 1 uh, wherever there's an n plus 5. a sub 2, now you're going to be plugging in a 2 wherever there's an n. 2 times 2 plus 5. The third term, a sub 3, is 2 times 3 plus 5. And you would do that up until you had done that 6 times. So the first term is 2 times 1 plus 5, which is 7. The second term is 4 plus 5, which is 9, equals 9, uh, 6 plus 5, which is 11, and then I think we can pick up the pattern 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, and 17. Uh, first six terms of the following sequences, f of 1 is how you'd write the first term of that sequence, this is equal to negative 3 to the 1 minus 1 f of 2 is equal to negative 3 to the 2 minus 1, f of 3 is equal to negative 3 to the 3 minus 1, um, and so on and so forth. Obviously, you do that six times. Uh, your first term, negative 3 to the 0th, is 1, because anything to the 0 is 1. Negative 3 to the first power is negative 3. Negative 3 to the second power is 9. Your third term is going to be negative 27, positive 81, so on and so forth. So your second term, uh, when each term of a sequence is added together, it forms a series. So go ahead and write that down. So I've just taken the sequence I had in the last slide and turned it into a series. That series would be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. So instead of the commas in between, uh, we're adding them. So the sum of this one would be 6, 12, 30, 20. <laughs> All right, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18. perfect. Um, and then the sum of this one would be infinite because it goes on forever. 
Uh, the second, another type of homework question, I think this is the second type, uh, in, in order for your homework, uh, is something called summation notation. This is a mathematical method or a, a mathematical notation to write series. Go ahead and write this whole slide down. Uh, yeah. If you need to pause, you might, because I am, I am a kind of on a time crunch here. I get cut off at 15 minutes. All right, so uh, this notation, uh, this is the notation that we use to always uh, represent summation notation. And my goal is going to be, is be to write this series using this notation here. Um, what goes underneath is the number you want to start at. So we're going to start in by plugging in 1, and the number on top is the number we want to end at. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to end up iterating 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then until we get to the number up here, which in this case is 4. What you do with those numbers is you plug them in for uh, your variable here. So here we've used the variable i. It doesn't matter what variable you use. Uh, typically we use i, j, or k, or also n uh, are frequently used. But uh, So we plug in 1, um, we get 2, and then you'd iterate up to 2, and then you'd plug 2 in, and you'd get 4. Then you'd iterate up to 3, and you'd plug in 3, and you'd get 6. Then you'd plug in 4, you'd iterate up to 4, but 4 is our max, so that's the last number we're going to plug in. So then you'd get 8, and then you'd find the sum of that. Uh, notice the only difference here is that now we're ending at infinity, so it just means it goes on forever. Finding the sum of the series... Uh, here you plug in 1, uh, and you go up until you have plugged in 8, uh, so, sorry, plugged in 5. So you plug in 1, you get 8. Not comma, it should be plus, because it's a series. Summation notation, we're always talking about series. So we're always talking about adding them together. So I plugged in 1, then you plug in 2, and you get 16. Then you plug in 3, you get 24. Then you plug in 4, and you get 32. Then you plug in 5, and you get 40. Uh, I believe that's 120. <coughs> uh, why don't you guys try this one? Or at least get, get a head start on this one while I drink my tea. So you plug in 1, I squ uh, remember, like I said, the variable here doesn't matter as long as it matches here. So you plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0. Iterate up to 2, 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3. Then 2, sorry, then 3, uh, and you get 8. And then 4, which is our max, you get 15. So your answer is 26. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, writing the series using summation notation. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and write these three uh, series down. Uh, if the substitute would go ahead and pause this, I'd greatly appreciate that, as I believe I'm running out of time. All right, so I'm actually going to start with this one because I think the pattern is easiest to identify in this one. Um, this is obviously six. 36 is 6 times 6, 216 is 6 cubed, this one's 6 to the 4th power. Uh, so if I wanted to rewrite these, I would have 6 to the 1st, plus 6 squared, plus 6 to the 3rd, plus 6 to the 4th. Um, using summation notation, uh, if I wanted to, let's say, use the variable k, so k equals 1, right? I mean, typically you're going to start at 1, you don't have to start at 1. I think it's usually easiest, and it is in this case, I believe. Um, this would just be 6 to the kth power. So 6 to the first, 6. 6 to the second, right? You're just iterating up. 36. 6 to the third, 
two sixteen six to the fourth one twenty one two nine six. Uh, so you want to stop at at four, and this would be the summation notation for that series. Well, let's go ahead and try this one now. Um, typically, when you have fractions, it's going to be easiest to consider the numerator and consider the denominator separately. So uh, focus on getting focus on the pattern of the numerator, focus on the pattern of the denominator, then just write the numerator and the denominator. We'll use the variable n this time. Um, if you notice the numerator, it is one's one to the first. Two to the second, three to the second. Sorry, one to the second, two to the second, three to the second, four to the second. Make sense, right? These are all the perfect squares, and so my numerator could be represented by this is the thing that's iterating up. These all stay the same, so I could represent the numerator by n squared, as long as n is one. You guys agree? One squared is one. And I iterate up to 2, 2 squared is 4, plug in 3, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. I'm going to stop at 4, I can already tell. Um, my, my denominator, the pattern might be a little bit more complicated or a little bit harder to pick up, but if you just notice that it's 1 more than whatever I had in the numerator, uh, it becomes a little easier. Uh, my denominator then would just be n squared plus 1. So I plug in 1, I get 1 over 2. If I plug in 2, I get 4 over 5, and so on and so forth. Uh, this example is more difficult, and so uh, I did want to throw one of these in there, though. Um, I can tell right away that, right, because of that, okay, we'll bring you back. Because of the dot, 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 actually I threw in one too many, uh, we're going to have uh, our max is going to be infinity. Um, as for the rest of it, uh, the pattern is like very strange uh, with the pluses and the minuses. It goes, uh, but if you just consider just the numbers themselves, it just goes up by one each time. And so, when the signs are alternating, but the pattern of the actual numbers is very simple, we have a, a method for that. Um, and that meth method is just to consider the numbers. Uh, how would I write this uh, series if it was just 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, and then 6? Well, I would do, if k was 1, I would do k plus 1. You guys agree? Plug in 1, get 2. Plug in, now iterate up to 2, get 3. Plug in 3, get 4. Um, but that didn't help me with my negatives. Uh, and one of the ways that we get this uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, uh, thing is if we took the number negative 1 and took it either to the k or to the k plus 1 power, uh, watch what happens here. Uh, if I plug in 1, I'm going to do this in red. If I plug in 1, I get 1 times, plug in 1 here, negative 1. Right, because negative 1 to the first power is 1. Now I'm going to iterate up to 2. If I plug in 2, I get 3 times, if I plug in 1, Sorry, now I'm plugging in 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So I'm multiplying it by positive 1. Now if I plug in the number 3, I get 4. Uh, sorry, that was a typo there. If I plug in 4, sorry, 3, I get 4. And then I plug in 3 here, negative 1 to the third power is negative 1. And so here you can see negative 2 positive 3, negative 4, and I'm getting that where it uh, alternates every time the positive or the negative. And so I did see one of the homework questions that was like this. I think it was uh, somewhere in the, the late 30s or 40 on your homework. Uh, hopefully this whole thing made sense. Uh, here's your homework. You guys have the rest of the time for that. Thanks.